Alright. Now you should be ready to go. Oh no, tell me this is going to jump the whole time. What's up everybody? We are, hopefully we have some decent audio. Let's see if, okay. Let me know if you guys can hear me. All right, so we're going to go into some of the, uh, I'm going to pull up my cell phone here. I am out at Youth Nationals for weightlifting where we've just got a whole bunch of savages. I don't know if you follow any of this stuff. Uh, yesterday, out of those three lifters, two, one of them got second place. All of them, you know, five, all of them actually went five for six, I believe. Uh, just absolute animals. And if you guys, if you guys follow, you could go see some of the videos I have up on the, up on our, uh, um, up on my Ghostface D Miller uh, channel, you can you can see all that. So we got here. Let's go over that YouTube T-shirt giveaway. Which, by the way, this freaking shirt here is sick. It's from Triumph Wu Tang Clan. Torch flaming victory, sweet, so sweet. So check that out. That's available right now. But let's get into this. Um, we got t-shirt giveaway gotcha racing exercises to make you faster you won the giveaway for exercises to make you faster little Romy Rome little Romy Rome you won the second one for awaken the glutes I gotta get in and see if I can get this up on the uh... so let's go with the winners Jason I don't know if you put the winners in here um... Got that solidarity question. Okay, uh, yeah, we didn't put that in there, Jason. With the uh, um, Jason, you didn't put the uh, the stuff in there for who won. Email us so gotcha racing, little Romy Rome. Email us support at garagestrength.com that you won the giveaway and provide a screenshot of your YouTube studio using the same account that you use to enter. Uh, you got to take that screenshot, you can you know, black out the, uh, the part about your revenue or anything along those lines, but that way you can confirm that you are indeed the winner. So Lil Romy, Rome, and then Gotcha Racing. All right, so let's get into, if we could put up in there uh, in the chat, Lil Romy, Rome, and um, Gotcha Racing for, for the winners. All you guys have to do is email us at support at garagefrank.com with a screenshot of your YouTube studio, and then we're going to be sending you guys that free Swole shirt, uh, which we got a lot of Swole comments yesterday on the, um, uh, on the, on the mobility video, on that mobility video. Okay, so questions. I want to get into these questions because they're pretty good. I'm also surrounded by Blue Jays. There's like 30 Blue Jays out here right now. Um, I'm out in Colorado Springs. So, Maruna, Maruna Edman Sour, 8276. This is on the bulk video, okay? This is on the, the nutritional bulk video. I enter the house for lunch. This is a great question, okay? Enters the house for lunch. The table set. The family gathers to eat couscous, zaluk uh, with taktuka, and a dish of roasted chicken with delicious potatoes, and it's an amazing Moroccan sauce. There's a place to sit amongst the family members but everyone is eating from one dish, okay? Everybody's eating from one dish. And so the question becomes, if we're eating a family-based meal where everybody is eating from one big dish, how do you count calories, right? How, do you, how are you able to count those calories and then um, actually, you know, stay within where your macros need to be if you want to bulk and you don't want to get too husky? Uh, and so I think that's a good question because I, I feel like that's a big question that a lot of people will ask us around um, around Christmas, around Easter, around the holidays. Uh, and in this case, Maruna, 
Maruna Man Sour 8276. He's Moroccan, uh, so it's a cultural thing. Everybody's eating from the same thing. And I think the big thing that I would say would be if you're if you're trying to bulk and you're looking at it like, all right, I want to I want to have uh, eight ounces. I want to have eight ounces of the chicken. Try to eye up on your palm. Like this is probably going to be, you know, if you're six feet tall, six one, I want to eye up on my palm and I'm going to sit there and go, all right, I want eight ounces. So I want two of them. This is going to be about four ounces. My one palm is going to be about four ounces of chicken. It's not perfect. I'm not saying it's going to be the, the, that dialed in uh, macro, but if you get eight ounces, that's going to be plenty of protein. And then if you're getting the couscous, I would say like two to three heaping servings. One of the things with couscous and with rice, uh, stuff like that, would be you can eat a fair amount of it and it's not that many calories. Now, the Moroccan sauce, I, had, I would have to know how uh, which Moroccan sauce we're talking about. Is it butter based? Is it... Um, is it tomato based like that's going to have is it cream based uh so that's going to be that's going to be specific to that actual um type of of sauce that you're making so it's like if it's tomato based you could have a little bit more if it's cream based i would just have one serving um but looking at it like three heaping servings of the couscous um two to three palms of the chicken and that's a good bulk dude that's a really really good bulk i think the one thing that we forget about and we make things a little bit more complicated is that traditional traditional um, ethnic eating is usually really really healthy and very good they usually you know we're usually using better spices uh, we're usually preparing the food a lot cleaner and so I, I think it's a, a great way to, to roll forward um, and I hope that that helps for um, Maruna aid man sour 8276 now Obi-Wan Quixote 8423, this is another question off that bulk video. Obi-Wan Quixote, one of my favorite names off of off of the YouTube comments. Um, Sturmio, that's great. Muhammad Tyson, I like that, that question. I'll get to that. Okay, so this is a good question. For people in a weight class sport, how do you gain strength without actually adding weight? Okay, so this is good for weightlifters. This is good for boxers. This is good for wrestlers. This is good for uh, powerlifters. Anyone that is in a weight class-based sport, right? Um, and you want to get stronger, but you can't get out of that weight class. The first tip that I would do, uh, that I would provide is one, establishing what your nutritional uh, macros are going to be. And I would say probably three or four days out of the week, you should be in a four to 500 uh, caloric deficit. Two to three days out of the week, you can be, you know, neutral or maybe a little bit positive. And on those positive, on those sur surplus caloric days, that's when you can start to lift a little bit heavier. My favorite type of lifting that I would recommend would be, okay, let's say one of the best ways that weightlifters, if we look at weightlifters, if we look at, there's my daughter, if we look at weightlifters and we look at, at somebody like wrestlers, they've got to train plyometrics. We've got to improve their intramuscular coordination. Okay, so they've got to have, they've got to be extremely coordinated and be able to fire as rapidly as possible. And in turn, that's gonna to lead to better performance. Um, so if we're in a weight class sport, you've gotta establish your, your macros, and then you've gotta sit there and say, all right, if I establish um, my macros, we can lift a little bit heavier. So let's say if we wanna increase our relative strength, we do six doubles, seven triples, uh, five doubles, and then we're, only, we're not gonna do a ton of drop sets. We're not going to do a whole ton of drop sets. The drop sets instead are going to be like two sets of seven instead of two sets of 12. Um, but the big thing would be using technical coordination movements, using absolute strength exercises that are heavier, and then using exercises that are going to be more explosive. What's up, Seneca? Hi. How are you doing? And so if we can think about it from, from the perspective of improving our neural drive, improving our neural force, okay, we've got to lift heavier but we also have to be extremely fast and explosive. Okay, we don't wanna do a ton of hypertrophic work. Okay, so we don't wanna do uh, a ton of bodybuilding. I'm doing a YouTube Live, how are you doing? You wanna say hi to everybody? Say hi, I'm Seneca. I'm doing, I'm, I'm talking to the world right now about how if you're in a weight class based sport, you've gotta lift heavy, you've gotta be as explosive as possible and do those plyometrics. Okay. And then you've got to also make sure that you've got your nutrition dialed in. So those are those big factors. So if you get into a weight class ba based sport, that's what we've got to focus on. Okay. And you're going to start lifting next year, right?
next year. Seneca is going to start lifting next year. Okay, the next question, Kai Van 301. This is from a speed workout. Okay, so if we're getting into a speed workout, would it be bad to do single leg squats on leg power day and on impulse day? And so if you're inside of peak strength, if you head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS, or you can download peak strength today, you can get into the football based training and you're going to understand that leg power day is going to be day one. Okay, impulse day is going to be day four athlete day day three so you can look at it and say okay based off of Kai Van's question on leg power day is it possible to do heavy single leg squats and then on impulse day you can do faster single leg squats and he's asking essentially should you can you get away with doing single leg squats all the time okay um, and I did have research papers that I wanted to cover in here uh, Jason, I don't know if you wanted to put those research papers. Um, let me see. They're not in the... Yeah, we don't have any of those research papers that I had sent over. Uh, so there is... I wanted to cover a little bit of the biomechanics. Um, yeah, that's right, with Seneca. I wanted to cover some of the biomechanics around the single leg squats uh, into the bilateral squat and just the, the hip action that you get out of the single leg squats is crazy okay it's extremely it's much more focus on knee extension and hip extension and hip stability when we're single leg squatting okay so there's some bio there's some biomechanical analysis of bilateral squats versus single leg squats okay so that's something that we can sort of play off of is using that what i would say to kai van is i would want to analyze Kai, where is your, and ironically, my sister's name's Kai, right? And Kai. I would want to analyze what is your back squat. Let's say in this case with Kai Van, uh, Kai's back squat is, you know, 500, you know, 500 pounds. You know, so if he struggles with speed, then he should be doing more single leg squats. Okay, so that's like the big factor right there is that we've got to recognize where your weakness is. You want to sit on my lap? We've got to recognize where your weakness is, where your strengths are, and then we can build off of that. So for increasing speed for football, it's going to be based around, one, getting stronger with your single leg squats, two, getting faster with your single leg squats, so you'd be doing those impulse squats, you'd be doing the impulse day with single leg squats, and then three, uh, the other big factor is that we also need to, um, in, in this specific case, do things like unbroken squats, and then that's gonna to lead to better dynamic trunk control. Okay, so if we can improve our, our dynamic trunk control, that's gonna help with our agility. So those are some real, real big factors. Now, uh, I got in my app here, if we looked at, there's, there's a study that I wanted to use when I was answering Obi-Wan Quixote, and basically, um, he, his whole question was around, weight loss okay and so there's a lot of weight loss research uh, and if we put this the uh, the this study around the weight loss I want to put that into the chat if we look at it and say all right if we focus on gradual weight loss and this is going back to the the question from Obi-Wan Quixote if we look at gradual weight loss versus fast weight lo weight loss fast weight loss okay results in a tremendous amount of strength loss, decrement, strength decrement, okay? So if we're losing weight very, very quickly, okay, typically what's gonna happen is we're gonna see a pretty big drop off in our overall strength performance. Now, going back to the nutrition, if we're trying to maintain our strength or increase our strength, over about 10 to 12 weeks, it's okay if we lose our body weight of about 0.5 to 0.7%, okay? And if we can do that over 10 weeks, we can maintain or gain strength, okay? So that's the big answer to uh, Obi-Wan Quixote is, look, it's possible to lose weight and actually gain strength as long as we're focused on the nutritional aspect long-term. We can't be out there, do you wanna get down? We can't be out there just trying to to, trying to suck down like a wrestler from the from back in the day we've got to focus on all that stuff long term so that we can perform at a at a higher level while still losing weight who's down there Keenan. oh keenan my my twin seneca's twin brother's right outside the door you should 
bring them up here. We'll put them on the camera. So I think it's important to recognize one with weight loss that it should be done long term. A lot of somebody commented yesterday on the uh, mobility video. When did Dane start getting uh, bicep veins? And I think the big factor here is like my weight loss has occurred over a year, like literally over a year. And I've gone from like 255 down to like 217. So this has taken a long time to get there. And it's the same factor with everybody um, is that we've got to make sure that things happen long term. Now, if you are in a competition that's right around the corner and you got to cut, you got to cut hard. That's just part of the game. So I'm going to go into some of these questions then. Rambler, what's your opinion on this advice for two weeks only? Cut total BMR calories in half. The premise is because, okay, so what's your opinion on this advice? For two weeks only, cut your total basal metabolic rate calories in half. The premise is because you will be able to lose 10 pounds in two weeks before the metabolism is affected. Um, so, well, first of all, Saeed is saying uh, bone mass affects weight loss much as well about losing strength. Um, Saeed, I, I, so one of the, that's an interesting point that you're bringing up because one of the things with the GLP ones that they're noticing is that people on semi-glutide, okay, so Wagovi, Ozempic, um, those those drugs, they're losing a massive amount of weight, but they are losing bone mass. But the reason why, what they're seeing is that these people are losing bone mass because they're not resistance-based training, they're not exercising, okay? So we need to recognize that if we're trying to lose weight and we want to maintain bone mass and we want to maintain our energy because another downfall of Wagovi or uh, the semi-glutides is that people are fatigued. Well, they're fatigued because they're eating less. Part of a side of the side effect of losing weight is you do genuinely get fatigued quicker because you're decreasing your caloric intake. And you also, we also know that there will be a diminishment in bone mass if we're not doing any resistance-based training. So when we're losing weight, we need to sleep more and we need to resistance-based train to maintain our bone mass. It's a simple, it's very, very simple. It's not that crazy. So going back to Rambler's question, I don't like the, the big drop-off in two weeks. A lot of what happens typically is that people want to see, they want to see these quick results, but then when they have these super quick results, they quit after, after you know, six or seven weeks and they don't stay committed to it. Here's Keenan. Keenan. Keenan's a lot bigger. Come here, Seneca. So this is Keenan. This is Seneca. Our twins are joining us for the YouTube live today. How you doing? When you you started lifting last week, Keenan just started lifting. He was he was already squatting, so he's already trying to work on. I on squatted too. Seneca squatted too. That is true. Okay, so let's get in. So we're reading over here. Okay. Um, Sam Vega, did your vert increase when you lost weight? So Sam, we actually just did an entire video on vertical jump and it was how can I increase my vertical jump in 15 minutes and the main focus was okay let me see over here thanks for coming in guys the main focus was all right how could I increase my vertical jump in 15 minutes and this video is going to be coming out in July the big crazy point here was that I had actually run like seven and a half or eight miles in the morning and then we filmed the video and I went out and jumped 31 inches, which is the most I've jumped in probably about three or four years. So even on fatigued legs, we have this 15 minute clip that we use to, to prime athletes to, to get your vertical jump to be potentiated, which you're gonna see in the video. And then I hit 31 inches, which was a PR for the first time in you know three or four years, and I'm 39 years old. So losing weight is definitely gonna have a positive impact on your vertical jump, just like it's gonna have a positive impact on your pull-ups, on your dips, anything along those lines. Um, mainly because what you're gonna see is uh, the, the relative strength is gonna improve. Uh, how do I maintain my body weight for weightlifting without tracking calories? I think the biggest thing here, I think you've, you've gotta track your calories. Like it's gonna come down to caloric intake. And if you're not paying attention to, to your caloric intake, then there's a problem, okay? Uh, so that, that's one big factor. Uh, that we've just got to remember you can't get away without tracking it i i you have to do you have to put some effort into that that front end okay dower how can i start my weightlifting training i have no weightlifting clubs or gyms nearby can i how can i start doing snatches cleans as a beginner so dower what i would do is are you able to do power snatches power cleans in the commercial gym um 
growing up, one thing that we were able to do, hey, why don't you guys head downstairs now, okay? One thing that we were able to do growing up was we would actually clean, we had metal plates, we didn't even have bumper plates. So up until the point where I could clean like 120 kilos, we were using metal plates and we would lower it like this, okay? And then my dad made us put carpets on the concrete so we wouldn't cut the concrete. You could do that uh, in a public gym. You could do power snatches. You can do uh, power cleans that way. You could do power clean in the front squats. You could do heavier push presses. And what ends up happening is actually on that eccentric, your traps and your upper back just get super, super swole. So if you focus on the pulls and you focus on the squats, you can do that, Dower. You can you can get into weightlifting training in the commercial gym, and then over time, if you if you can afford to to save up or find a better gym or move to garage strength and train on site, you can do that. Dark blue, excuse me, but what do you think works well for an archery build? I would say for an archery build, it's got to be long duration isometrics. I think it, you've got to be really strong with your pulls. Um, You've got to understand and train your quiet eye as well. I think there's a lot of trunk work that goes into it. Actually, in the mobility, if you guys watched the mobility video that we did yesterday, uh, we have an archery-based uh, thoracic extension exercise in that video. So you could actually use that video to help benefit your archery uh, and your archery performance. So when you say vertical jump, this is from Rambler again, like jump from a static position? No, in the, if so in the NFL, they'll do a, a counter movement. So you do a counter movement and jump. And so we're actually gonna be doing a counter movement and jump in the video. What's my take on seed oils? I believe there was a lot of negative research early on on seed oils. And a lot of that research was done with high, high, high concentrated seed oils. I think the last 10 years, there's a lot of evidence that the seed oils are not anywhere near as bad as they were originally thought to be. Um, I think if you're looking at specifically, you know, uh, olive oils and um, I mean, even coconut oil to a point, but I, I even think there's, there's a decent, I, people are going to think I'm a lunatic for saying this. Canola, canola oil is not as bad as it once was thought to be. Uh, I, I think that there's a, quite a bit of evidence on that. Would you recommend college sprinters take creatine? I, so yes, 100%, but um, you've got to make sure that your some people will have hydration issues. It's not everybody, but some people will feel that. And there is a there is a document or a paper on uh, preventing hamstring injuries with creatine. So you've just got to. I'd play that uh, sprinter to sprinter. Some athletes they get really tight when they sprint with creatine. Some athletes they don't. So you've just got to be aware of that uh, and and base that around that. Are push-ups useful for weightlifting? And can I do them every day, every session? Push-ups, 100%. You can do them every day, every session. I even, for weightlifting, would do handstand push-ups. I think that would be better. What are good things to do after half a year out uh, from ACL surgery for leg day? After ACL surgery, I think sled work, I think single leg work, I think backward lunges, backward walks up hills. I think those are all great ways that you can strengthen your quads uh, and make sure that you're stable in that, in that, uh, in that knee joint. Uh, Dalvin Cook, I think, so... I want to bring this up. Dalvin Cook, who's one of the best running backs in the NFL, I think he might end up signing with the Patriots, actually. He's a free agent this year. He blew out his knee, I want to say, in 2017. And he's got, you know, he's a super agile guy, and he's a smaller running back, so he's had some injury issues. He came back pretty well from that ACL injury, and he's got a decent amount of, of training footage around um, still squatting, doing single leg work, doing the sled, sled work. So, um, it is possible that you can that you can recover from that. Um, can you go in depth on how to build muscle, Miguel? I, I think our whole channel is around building muscle, so we I think we do a pretty good job with that. But the big factor around building muscle uh, would be putting yourself in a resistance-based training situation, making sure that you have enough protein and nutritional intake for for uh, muscle protein synthesis making sure that uh, you're sleeping very well, that your hormones aren't impacting that negatively. Uh, I just gave my sister the finger. Uh, and that you, when you have some type of mechanical tension, you're eating well enough to provide that adaptation. Um, okay, Rambler again. I started doing power complex with dead barbell rows, power clean and push press, but my heart rate spikes to zone five fast. Should I be, no, no, for, for you should get up to a, you should get up to like zone five, and then you would drop back down during that rest period. Nick is sad. 
at Garage Strength, is there a chance that you move location to Colorado somewhere in Longmont? No. Uh, no, I, will, I, I won't move here, not because I don't like it. I do like it here. It's just that my family's from PA. Uh, Alexander Nogby, what about those athletes that don't do it? Would you say they lack something compared to someone who tracks it? I would say yes, for sure. People who don't track are genuinely, generally, not as focused on their training. They're generally not as dialed in with their, their mindset. They're gen generally... Uh, they, they don't they don't take all the nuance of training seriously. Now, you can be a world class athlete and not track your macros. You can do that, but not everyone is super talented. And if you want the little things to get you up a notch, you've got to do the little things. And that means doing mobility. That means tracking your macros. That means sleeping a little bit more. That means you know paying attention to technique. All of those things. If you want to get to the next level for you as an individual. You've got to do the little nuance. Um, what are your top three exercises to avoid spine injuries? I would say front squats, uh, snatch grip, RDLs, and let's say heavy, heavy, heavy reverse hypers. Uh, to get thicker bones, what would your advice be for smaller wrists? So Saeed, I would say uh, we know bone density can drastically improve uh, from weight-based training, from resistance-based training. So if we're talking about wrists specifically, I would target the brachioradialis, pronator teres. Um, I would focus on also doing things like pressing because when you're holding with an open palm and we're pressing with a fat grip, that's going to force a little bit more motor unit recruitment um, from our prime movers in the forearms. So to hit that, uh, to get that wrist to grow a little bit more, I would 100% say let's focus on um, pressing, forearm work, uh, and do it very, very frequently. Even doing explosive push-ups, because the mechanical tension just from explosive push-ups could help densify those wrists. Um, you need to Google counter movement jump. So, Rambler, that would be like if I'm in a start position and I dip down, that's the counter movement. So it's counter movement and then back up. And that can that creates a stretch shortening cycle. Um, Kyle Sipe, which paper i forget what your question was on if it was on the creatine why don't we put that in and jason if you could write this note down dane find the creatine paper on hamstrings uh we could use that for next week creatine and and performance uh if we could write that down what's up stefano from italy thanks for tuning in all across the globe i am here on site in colorado springs we've got the whole weightlifting uh nationals is this week next week i have to fly to eugene oregon and I think that's a big factor, guys, too, is to remember that, one, I'm trying to provide as much content for you guys around sports performance, around training in general. Um, I want you guys, I want to be able to coach you as much as possible, provide all that information, and even providing you with our app, Peak Strength. So when we're doing this, I'm also a coach to athletes. I'm not just an influencer online like a lot of those fitness people out there. We're trying to actually, you know, take our athletes that are on site take them to the next level and then use those lessons that we're learning from taking these athletes to the next level yesterday we had three people to compete that were all we had two champs uh one runner up and it's like how can we take that knowledge that experience that information and then also help you guys to achieve your next level of greatness for the for you guys to become freaks and then at the same time basically you have peak strength in your pocket so you can head over to peakstrength.app and you can download uh, peak strength and improve your overall performance. Uh, let's see here. Because my schedule, I work out before bed and don't sleep well. Does this affect my gains and weight loss goals? So March, what I would say is it could for sure affect your, your weight loss goals and, and your gains. I would say to try to maybe bump it up by an hour uh, when you're training, but also if it's possible to improve your your like decompression period like what do you do post-workout what are you eating are you able to post-workout uh, try to relax and recover a little bit more uh, I think those are things that you've got to bring in and sort of challenge yourself to improve upon um, Dale Pierre okay or actually let's go to San Vega how much farther would you have thrown if current Dane could train past Dane starting at 18 I actually think about this a lot where I think about it, actually, if I would have trained myself when I was like 13 or 14. Um, I don't know, you know, that, I, it's just like a fun question though. How can I increase muscle pumps and wider shoulders? And is creatine or NO better? I mean, 
NO gives you a huge pump. Uh, so does arginine. Uh, creatine is great as well for, for hypertrophic gains, but creatine is much better for rate of force development and peak force. It will help a little bit with, with hypertrophy, but the, a recent study actually just showed it was, it's drastically more effective for rate of force development and absolute strength than it is for absolute uh, muscular gain. So I think just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, have you heard of LDN? So Steven, I was actually on low dose naltrexone for a little over a year for, um, for my Lyme disease. So I have heard of LDN. Uh, I've done quite a bit of research on low dose naltrexone. And yes, I have, I have, I have used it. Um, as far as reducing inflammation, I think it's, uh, I think it's one of those things a lot of people think is going to be like the next big thing and it, and it, it hasn't like proven out. I know that people that have AIDS uh, have had success with it. Um, some people that have very serious autoimmune diseases like lupus, Hashimoto's, they'll benefit quite a bit from it. I think it's sort of hit or miss otherwise. Uh, what's the best reps and sets for bulking and maintaining tone? Um, best reps and sets for bulking eight by eight go in and back squat eight by eight and then do you know three accessories that are like four sets of 20 then the next day bench press eight by eight and do three accessories four sets of 20 that will blow you up like just now you can only do it for about four to six weeks but it, it'll blow you up uh advice for o lifting at over six feet tall so i mean lash is over six feet tall you gotta squat a lot. The big thing there is when you're tall, you've gotta get your squat as high as possible. Okay, so I think that's gonna be the big factor is that we've, you've gotta improve your back squats. And I think this just goes back to our original conversation. Building strength without gaining weight, you've got to focus on coordination, okay? So we've gotta be moving heavy, heavy weight to stimulate high threshold motor unit recruitment. If we're lifting very heavy weights, we stimulate high threshold motor unit recruitment. If we're lifting fast, we also, if we have that intent to lift as quickly as possible, we also stimulate our neural drive, okay? Basically what happens is our muscle spindles communicate to our brain through afferent signals and, say, signals and say, yo, we've got to recruit really, really quickly to execute this movement. So lifting heavy, lifting very fast, and then doing plyometric movements, those are all key. So if we're gonna be a taller individuals, or if we're taller individuals, if we're over six feet tall, we've gotta push those big weights over a long period of time. And that's one thing I, I'll bring up. I'm 6'1". I struggled tremendously with front squats. I've got extraordinarily long legs, okay? Front squats were the bane of my existence. 6'1", I, I wanted to front squat over 450, which was, you know, what, what's that, 205 kilos. I front squatted every day for two years just to find the motor pattern and to continuously push it and to get comfortable with those front squats, okay? So if you are a taller individual and you need to gain that strength, this is very similar to, to gaining strength um, without, lo or without gaining weight, it's very similar. You've got to consistently hit those motor patterns so that you can groove everything. And that's a big factor is that the more volume that you get, the more comfortable that you're going to be, the more comfortable you're, you are, the stronger you're, get, you're going to get, and the better your body will be at recruiting those high threshold motor units through the joint patterns that you need to improve upon. Explosive push-ups are a good idea, 100%. Also, guys, check this freaking shirt out. It's so freaking sweet. Head over to garagestrength.com, pick this up. It's in our Summer Swole series. All right, let's take two more, and then I'm going to get back to working. Um, I've got to film a, a video on weightlifting actually after this, We're talking about, um, ironically, Rack 979. What is Haley's path to the Olympics? What sort of total would she? So she has to out total Jordan De La Cruz. And I believe that that total will probably be 202 to 204, somewhere in that range. Um, Jordan is one of the best lifters in the entire world, as is Haley. Uh, we've got a lot of ground to make up, and it's going to be a freaking scrap and it doesn't end until april of next year uh diego camarero hi coach love your approach and all your content my question is do you recommend any exercises to train lowering to train lowering patterns quickly descend to avoid a tackle oh yes absolutely 
um, some of the work actually that we'll, we've been doing with um, like the banded snatches on the single leg roller, the dumbbell snatches, again, if you follow me on Instagram, the dumbbell snatch that we posted, those are movements that work really well. I also think depth drops work really well. Um, getting comfortable in that single leg position is gonna help you tremendously. Uh, all of those plyometric exercises, uh, single leg jumps, single leg stair jumps, those will pay off as well for getting into the fold and feeling comfortable. I have experiment with a meat and fruit diet. What are your thoughts? Does fruit provide enough carbs and glucose for your training program? I think fruits do to a point if you're eating enough. I think if you're eating enough grapes, um, bananas, oranges, um, kiwis, I'm trying to think through like raspberries. I think if you're eating enough, the problem with it is that it's hard to eat a lot of fruit because it does fill you up because there's a lot of fiber in it. So just be aware of that. I, I think that starches are phenomenal. I think that one thing that we forget about is there's a lot, a lot of evidence that starches are phenomenal, one, for energy output and training, but two, for general health. Eating potatoes, eating yuccas, eating jicama, eating you know bananas, oats, it's freaking phenomenal. Starches are phenomenal. So I don't know why we would we would just remove that out of there. Is Haley in the weight 49K weight class? Yes, she is. Uh, got you racing. How can I build my upper chest more but still focus on my flat bar, flat bar all bench? Okay, so got you racing. What I would do is do all of your 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 vertical pressing with dumbbells and all your vertical and even do high high foot um, push-ups. So foot elevated push-ups. I started getting into O lifting. They are impressive. Yes, weightlifters are very impressive. Um, let's see here. Dane, when will you come to the land of Danes, also known as Dane Mark? Keese Kennegard, you get me a uh, Keese, you get me set up with a with some type of um, let's say a seminar or something. I'm gonna be in Estonia in November. Uh, not, you know, not that it's close, but it's somewhat close. Um, yeah, got you racing. You did win, so make sure that you 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 email us support at garagestrength.com. Um, email us support at garagestrength.com, and you won that free shirt this week. Uh, Keith, going back to your question, if I could do a seminar and we could make a little bit of money to to help alleviate the the expense of the trip, I'd love to come to Denmark. I'd love it. Uh, Rack nine seventy nine, big lifts for forty. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, she's ready, and she is ready for that though. She's capable of doing those those lifts. 100% capable. I'm preparing for the army. What kind of training would you recommend? So Florian, we actually did a, uh, a military video, strength training for the military over on Peak Strength. Guys, I've, Peak Strength channel is really starting to grow quite a bit and we're getting into nitty gritty stuff like, like training for uh, the military, training for emergency responders. We just did a Taekwondo video that people are loving. Sweet Taekwondo video. Uh, we got some rugby videos over there, so make sure you're paying attention to our Peak Strength channel and, of course, our Garage Strength podcast channel where we're getting even deeper into that. Um, Tikanin, what's in Estonia in November? I assume Tikanin, you're, yeah, you're from Finland, right? Um, I have a, I was invited to the, the European Throws Conference, so I'm going to be presenting on throwing and coaching the throws um, in November 10th, I believe it is, something like that. Any advice on how to improve strength for kettlebell strict press? Improving a press with a kettlebell, okay, I'm gonna do seated strict presses. I'm gonna do pause dumbbell presses. I'm gonna do pause dumbbell banded presses with the band under my butt, pressing here with power elastics because we've got those loops, okay? The loops on the power elastic make it really easy to do accommodating resistance with dumbbells. Uh, I also would recommend doing a lot of Z presses. Okay, I like to do pin presses and Z presses to blow that up. Um, any advice on how to improve, or we just did that one. One last question for my notes. Start with sets of eight reps and yes, but that would be Dale, that's gonna be like eight sets of eight. Okay, again, you're gonna do a bench press, let's say eight sets of eight. Let's say your best bench press is, uh, is you know, Let's say your best bench press is 150. I would do eight sets of eight at like 110 to 120, somewhere in that range. And only take about a minute and a half time uh, rest. Um, should there be limits to progressive overload on body weight? For example, adding weight on Nordic hamstring curls. Um, 
I think on Nordic hamstring curls, what you can do is you can actually hold a dumbbell through that entire position and then drop the dumbbell at the bottom and then over time try to increase that progressive overload of the eccentric portion. I think that's a, that's a very good way uh, to improve that, that strength for uh, body weight exercises. Does anybody else have any questions? I am gonna, I'll take one or two more comments here. I'm glad you guys stuck around. Uh, we, we worked through all those issues in the beginning. Uh, I haven't streamed just on my, my laptop in quite a while. My wife just walked past. Um, so my whole family's out, out here, actually. I hope you guys enjoyed the cameos from Seneca and Keenan. Uh, you get to see that back end. Make sure you head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength today to get on those gains so that you guys can have easy access, freak training. Remember, that's everything that we're going to be providing you is easy access, freak training access to all of the knowledge that we're putting out on on youtube access to all the knowledge that we're going to provide inside of our app peak strength and of course sweet freaking apparel as well keist how do i increase my mobility in order to do high kicks that's going to be a lot of caustic squats that's going to be a lot of single leg squats in a very long position um and a lot of hamstring and, and hip work a lot of hamstring and hip work how do i get a swole shirt brandon you can go to garagetrank.com click on the summer swole set, uh, section and you can pick that up. And of course, comment in all of our long form videos for, for us to give them away. How do you get rid of tight hamstrings? You gotta do a lot of mobility work, a lot of mobility work. All right, I'm gonna head out. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking through this YouTube Live. Make sure you focus on, if you wanna build strength without gaining weight, we've gotta track your calories. We've gotta do heavy resistance-based training to lead to those high threshold motor unit recruitment. We've gotta do things fast. We've gotta do plyometrics to increase our intramuscular, coordinate, intramuscular coordination. Until next time, freaks, peace.